So starting. Hi everyone. Good evening from Nigeria. How are you guys doing today? I hope you're having a great day. Um, welcome to Angola Africa. My name is Valentine Awe. I'm the lead host. And I have here with me Oyema De Oyema Ja, who is my co-host. Oye, say hi. Hello, <laughs> Hello from Nigeria. Hello. <laughs> So today we have Connie, who will be taking us um, on our uh, Spanish app. And so we're going to open the floor for Connie to, you know, kickstart. Hi, Connie. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Yeah, it's good to be in Africa because uh, I don't get to travel. So it's nice to be vir like in Nigeria virtually. I'm glad to so, have you. I'm glad to have you. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's really cool to show my my application to other people because uh, I'm probably the last person people can think of that wants to uh, learn Spanish or, or Portuguese or, or Japanese. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, show my uh, slides. Look, I need to share my screen first. <laughs> okay. I actually have a, a spoiler because I've seen this before and I really like the tools that you used to uh, put all this together, Connie. Yeah, but I used the tools because you had that fire side chat with uh, with Jesus, right? <laughs> with Jesus? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah, she... I really like it. Yeah, so yeah, I'm going to, can you see, see my screen? Yes. Cool, so uh, yeah, for you guys, it's July 20th, but it's actually 21st um, midnight for me. So uh, it's good to, to uh, meet people in different time zones and I'm from the future and you are in the past. So I, I want to like, thanks Bonnie, like with, without her, I won't be like, uh, like the, the host of Angular APEC and Angular South Asia. And I won't be like sitting in my bedroom to present this talk to many people I have not yet met like in person. So uh, thank, thank you for like having Anger Nation and have all these like channels and helping like women and maybe like people un who are underprivileged to be hosts and can have opportunities to learn Angular or show what they know uh, about Angular like to the mass population in the world. So um, so if people uh, who who has the, op like for people who have the chance to meet Bonnie, like they are the lucky one for people who haven't met her. Um, I mean, you should like introduce them to Bonnie or, or get ask them to, to join Anger Nation. So, and I want to like thank maybe a Bonnie again because somehow like this um, storybook channel and I asked all these questions before um, uh, this presentation and Mark Berry like answer all of them. Therefore, I I created like all the storybook components uh, like on Sunday and I could uh, I mean I can like show my work to you guys and like how freaking cool like storybook is. So my agenda is like why I like spend all these hours to make the app, um, the GraphQL like architecture, Nest.js, a little bit on uh, a little bit um, on Prisma and E2E testing. Uh, the front end is uh, made is made of an Angular app. I want to spend some time to talk about cursor space cursor based like pagination and uh, optimistic UI. And at the end, uh, if we have time, I want to show my demo and the storybook components that um, that I created um, for this uh, presentation um, this morning. So a little bit uh, introduction about myself. So my name is um, Connie Leung. So I, I was born and raised in Hong Kong, but then I moved to Canada like with my family and lived in Canada for like 10 years. So, and I, I came back to Hong Kong after graduation and has and, and I have spent the last 17 years um, developing um, like application using like various like technologies 
And uh, recently, uh, my technical stack um, is uh, TypeScript, Nest.js, Angular, and Vue. So when I don't code, I'm I'm always like attending um, overseas conferences in Taiwan, um, Singapore, and Malaysia, or watch like ball games like of uh, Toronto Maple Leafs and, and Toronto Raptors. And uh, my GitHub repo, rip, rep, repo is real student. And my Twitter name, um, I change it to Connie Learn 404 because I want people to know like who I am, what my real name is, and um, that there's uh, this like passionate like developer in Hong Kong that they should maybe spend some time to get to know me. So why do I make this app? Um, it's because I have really like poor handwriting. I I uh, like every like Spanish class I wrote down notes, but I couldn't like read them later on. So to like ease the pain, I decided to um, build an application um, to store all the Spanish text that I have learned so far in a database, so that I can uh, retrieve them uh, from the database and um, and display um, the result in the browser. And um, I was inspired by uh, Bonnie because uh, she and and uh, is it Jesus, Angie Jesus like had a fireside chat on GraphQL. I watched the YouTube uh, video like at least three times, and I decided to use um, GraphQL um, as my back end and the front end. Um, uh, continues to be uh, Angular because I'm an an Angular developer first and Vue developers like second. So this is the um, architecture um, of my application. So I have like an Angular app, and I make a GraphQL request to the GraphQL server, and the GraphQL server like issue a Prisma query to the Postgres database, and the database like return a Prisma object and the object is uh, returned from the GraphQL server um, to the um, Angular application. So the result is stored in the upload cache and eventually um, the data like are displayed in the um, UI um, components of the Angular application. So this is um, my uh, backend technical stack. So the GraphQL server is uh, written in TypeScript and Next.js. Um, Prisma is a TypeScript OLM client that sit between uh, the GraphQL server and my database so that uh, all my requests um, have to go through Prisma and then to the database to get the data from the Postgres SQL and eventually um, end up in the front end application, which is uh, my uh, Angular app. So, so like all my like Spanish like uh, tags are stored in Postgres SQL. So Nest.js has a built-in uh, GraphQL module. It support like either a schema first approach or code first approach. So schema first approach is you write um, the GraphQL sch uh, schema from scratch and the uh, Nest.js um, generate um, the code for you automatically. Um, the other approach is a code first approach, which is you write um, uh, the code in uh, TypeScript, in um, um, GraphQL Resolver, and then you apply um, decorators such as um, a query, a mutation, a resolve field um, to define the GraphQL query, the GraphQL mutation, and the GraphQL resolver. And Nest.js um, uses uh, um, these like decorator and um, and function to generate the GraphQL uh, schema for you. Uh, I chose code first approach because I can write TypeScript, I know Nest.js, and I can combine these two um, advantages to um, generate um, 
the GraphQL schema and test my um, my um, GraphQL resolver in the GraphQL playground. And um, like GraphQL is a specification. It, it doesn't care where you get the data from. And for me, I delegate all my all, all the responsibilities to the services. And inside the services, they call um, Prisma service to um, issue like Prisma queries to the database to um, to retrieve the data like uh, as um, by the GraphQL query or the GraphQL uh, field resolver. So Prisma is a TypeScript OLM, which is very like which is like very popular, and the other like TypeScript OLMs um, that I can think of is Type OLM. So, um, I, like I like to keep it short, is I need to run um, some command to generate a Prisma Prisma client in a node underscore module folder. After that, I need to um, define uh, Prisma models in a file. Like for example, um, I have a course uh, model in the in the Prisma like like a conf configuration. So it, it has ID, name, description, uh, language, uh, lessons, and uh, some timestamps. And then I need to uh, run the Prisma command to generate um, the migration script, uh, which is like, which is um, uh, some SQL statements. After that, I have to run another Prisma command to um, apply the um, the migration script to the database to um, create new tables or add new columns or, or update uh, the database schema, like uh, etc. So, and this is the Prisma surface that I, I mentioned um, in previous uh, slides. So, in here I have um, like in here I have a cost surface, and then I have a um, get cost function that want to get all the courses in my database. So, like in the body of the function, I have to call um, the Prisma um, surf surface to talk to the database, and um, eventually I get the cursor. Which is the next um, timestamp, and uh, some uh, courses. Uh, I mean, and, and some courses that um, model in the in the course object, which is which is a JSON object. So it's nothing like you nothing special. And this is the playground. Um, like after like all the uh, GraphQL resolver uh, set up, and I can use the play playground to to try my query. So in in this uh, in this um, slide, I try to um, um, use a lesson ID to to uh, return a lesson that is about emotion. So I have like some um, sentences. And then for each sentence, I want to uh, get some translations. For example, I have um, maybe a Spanish text like um, yo, yo, yo soy una nina, and the English translation is I'm a girl, and and the Chinese trans translation is is um, is uh, like something else. So so when the backend um, is done. I can uh, focus my uh, focus my attention on on the front end. Oh, sorry, I sk skip something. So this is um, GraphQL E to E because um, I don't know like how to do like E to E like uh, testing for GraphQL and and it's actually a little different than uh, E to E testing of uh, REST API, like. For example, like GraphQL uh, query 
uh, and mutation are post request. So I didn't know that um, at the beginning, and I tried to use um, dot get uh, on, a, on a GraphQL query and it gave me like errors and I spent like a long time to figure out uh, the root cause and, and, it, and was able to continue. So in here, um, like the all GraphQL responses are stored in a data like data um, properties. So I need to um, use a uh, ex6 uh, destructuring to to get the, the the result I want from um, the data property, and then compare like for example the course with the expected um, result. So in here I want to get a course by ID one and and then it return a course to me and I want to compare that it has the correct ID um, name description and language. So it, it, it wasn't so hard after um, I got some experience. And um, so my advice is to always use post for like for uh, GraphQL like queries and, and mutation, and it will save you a lot of time and, and agony. So my uh, Angular app is actually like part of the Annex uh, workspace. So I wanted to, because everyone was raving about like Annex, so I migrated my app into uh, Annex uh, workspace. So my backend and my front end um, uh, are living in in the NX workspace. So the the works like the NX workspace support uh, Angular twelve. Uh, but I had to uh, use um, uh, this ng need Tailwind schematic to store to install uh, Tailwind CSS in the NX workspace. Um, and then um, the GraphQL uh, query is written in Angular Apollo because um, I don't know other like uh, GraphQL. Um, library that support Angular, so I uh, use this one. And I can um, use Angular Apollo to write GraphQL code to talk to the server. So um, after spending some time on on the front end, and I want to like show you how I um, uh, achieve like uh, pagination and uh, optimistic UI because uh, I, these two are the were the hardest for me when I work on the front end, and I wanted to show you guys like how I tackle the problems. Um, well, the the reason I use cursor based pagination is because um, my front end can add and delete uh courses. So if I use like offset based pagination, I will miss some um, courses um, from the back end. And the cursor based pagination allow me to um, retrieve um, courses from the back end based on um, uh, a certain condition of the cursor. For example, um, I want um, to the cursor to be like the created at timestamp and, and then um, the backend should always return um, the courses that are created um, after the cursor, so that uh, no course is uh, missed because I add um, or, or delete um, course in in the front end. And um, I use like watch query and uh, to uh, grab the initial uh, number of um, courses. And whenever I click the load more button in the in the UI, um, I call fetch query to return, uh, for example, four courses uh, that are created after the cursor, and and the courses um, are stored in the memory cache and automatically um, display in in the front end. Um, I mean, this code is 
actually copy from the documentation of Apollo uh, GraphQL. So, so trust me, it, it, it works. And optimistic UI, um, like I wrote a TypeScript uh, script to populate um, initial like data in the database. So, I mean, it, the front end like looks fine when I do query. So when I retrieve um, like items from the database, like they, I mean, the result is correct. I see what I want to see. But when I move on to um, create case, that's uh, when the issue happens. I don't see the I don't see the new course or new lesson that I I uh, create. But uh, I see I see the new um, entities when I press F5 to refresh the browser. So I Google. Um, online and find out that um, uh, I need to uh, take care of optimistic UI. Like when I do um, create, update or delete, I need to remember to update the Apollo cache. Otherwise, um, the, result, um, the result doesn't automatically like, uh, doesn't automatically reflect in, in the browser. So there are like um, three use cases, like um, cache requery and cache write query when I want to append a new like entity to an array, uh, cache modify, cache write fragment, and cache identity um, when I want to um, add a new item to an array that is uh, inside an object, and finally, like cache effect and cache GC, when I want to um, uh, delete something um, from from the from the cache. So I want to uh, show the want to show the the function in the in my editors. Let's see uh, here. Oopsie, sorry, this is something else. So um, my example is like add course. So I want to add a new course to to the to the database. So so in here I use cache.requery to uh, read uh, the course array from, from the cache. And then I get the cursor and the existing courses. And I want to check if um, the existing courses is um, defined or not. So if it is if it is defined, then I append a new course into the existing um, array. And if it is not defined, then I create um, an array with the new course that I just added. Like after that, um, I write the um, the new like I write the new data back to the cache uh, using a cache dot write query, and then after that, I return um, the new the the, the uh, new course. Um, no, I, okay, yeah, I return the new new course in in in, in map. And uh, display the um, uh, success message. Let's see, is it here? So, so um, use case number two is I want to add sentence to a lesson. So in my UI, I have a, a lesson, and then I need to show all the um, sentences um, that belongs to the lesson. So, and then if I want to um, add a new sentence to the lesson, I need to use cache.identity to, to find the lesson for me, and then uh, use cache.writefragment to 
create a new sentence fragment um, and then um, add that uh, new fragment to the sentence array, uh, increment um, total number of sentence by one, and then um, update the, the Apollo cache to, to uh, include the new uh, sentence and the new, new count. So I have it, uh, see. Oh, sorry. Oh, here. So news. Okay, okay, here. So S sentence is a mutation. So, uh, up, so when the mutation is successful, I need to call update to update the cache. So cache dot modify. I okay inside. I use cache dot identity to find the uh, lesson ID of the lesson. And then I want to update uh, two, two field of the lesson um, object, which um, they are paginated sentences and um, total sentences. So uh, for the, I want to talk about the easy case, like the total sentences is I get the, the previous uh, count and I increment the count by one because I have just uh, successfully um, add one sentence into the database. And then paginated uh, sentences. Um, okay, so I need to create a, I need to create a new uh, fragment using cache.write fragment. So data is my new sentence, fragment is the, the fragment that create um, the, the, the sentence. And then I perform some um, checking. So like if the new sentence already found in, in, in the array, then I don't have to do anything. Otherwise, I have to um, append a new sentence fragment into the existing um, sentence array. And, and then the, the Apollo um, cache is um, updated uh, automatically for me. And similarly, like I showed um, a success message in, in, the, in the UI. So, okay. So the last case is uh, DD translation. So sometimes I might, I may type, typing errors and I want to delete the translation. So it's, it's very, actually it's very easy. I use cache.evic to delete the translation um, by the translation ID. And then I run um, cache.gz to perform garbage collection after evict. So, so it's, I think it's, uh, oh, here. So I received this the translation ID, um, so I delete the, the translation from the database. Um, I get the deleted um, translation back. And um, and then I, in here, I call uh, cache.evict to, to um, delete the translation. And I use cache.gz to run um, garbage collection. And that's uh, is, uh, the end of my um, presentation. And uh, I want to show you the actual app because I've been talking, wow, for 30 minutes. <laughs> I want, to, want you guys to see my, my application. Thank you very much, Connie. Uh, before sh uh, you show the actual application, I don't know if anyone has questions for you. Show us the app. We want to see the money. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it's, yeah, it's here. I try to keep it short, but I, I, um, I hope, yeah, I hope I have time to show you the, the app. So You're this is great. my app. Yeah, this is my application. So uh, initially I load uh, four Spanish courses and um, yeah. And then I want to click 
load more it will show like four more and uh let's see where is i want to show you of course ah in here I forgot what I want to show you, is it? Oh, the cache, sorry, I want to show you the cache. So in here, like, after I click uh, the load more button, like I have four, four new courses and, oh, this is the, the, the fragment of the course. And this is the, the cursor, which is maybe the, the, uh the they created ad of uh this spanish 402 course so if i have like more like courses right if i click the low more button it will try to find uh four more courses uh where the created um ad is greater than uh this timestamp so and it will uh, work if I tr try to uh, add uh, new courses. Because if I use offset, then uh, if that there, there will there is problem. Like after I add new course, because the offset becomes five, and then it it will try to like give me like course six, seven, and eight, and and course number five in a database is is uh, not returned back to me, which is not what I want to see in the like, production application. So if I click, I want to see it. Is it this? Yep. So if I click, no. Yeah, I have nine courses and the cursor is, is the same. So I have nine courses no courses uh is uh no no course has gone missing and then yeah like all these like lessons and okay i can add new sentence no way i want something like spanish so uh ito, ito, ito. It means a uh, red red wine. Um, yep. So I can add translation. English red wine. It's here. And because uh, I'm a, like Spanish is not my native language, and I really need help to uh, learn the correct pronunciation. So I have this button that. Um, that uh, tell me the correct uh, Spanish pronunciation when I click it. I mean, I can hear it like myself, but you guys cannot. Uh, I think it's the limitation of Google Google uh, Meet. Can you play it again? Because I could barely hear it. I think I almost heard it. Oh, seriously? No, maybe not. <laughs> I felt like I heard it. Pinto Tinto. Yeah. We can barely oh, you hear, did hear it. We can hear it, yes. Yeah, it's yeah, this is red red wine and then is it red wine? White oh, wine. Oh, yeah, maybe. it is. No, no, white wine is pin pinto blanco. Oh. Yeah. So let's see. So yeah, so white wine, red wine, and uh, like, so I had classes with my Spanish teacher. So like, I insert these like record um, by myself. So, so like, so that's how, uh, how I spend my Friday night. Uh, yeah. So 
I guess like, yeah, if I'm if my Spanish is good enough, I can travel to Latin uh, America. Yeah. So. So this is um. So this is basically what my app does. <laughs> and then this the story story storybook. I did it in the wrong order. I finished the app and then I created the storybook com like storybook component. It should be um, the other way around. But I didn't know a uh, storybook until uh, like Bonnie like uh, invited the storybook team to to Anglo Nation and then like Ankita and and Tim they talk about it all the time and I wanted to uh, try it out and uh, yeah. And I'm 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 a beginner, but uh, this is uh, uh, the work that I I was able to accomplish uh, last week. <laughs> and you like it? Would you use it? Like, if would you? Do you think it's helpful for the amount of time that it took to install it? And then the uh, do you think it it helps your if you were? I think it works really on a very large project when you have to yeah. go through like many different screens to get to the screen that you're actually working on. Yeah, but yeah. And okay, it is it's recorded, right? Uh let's just say storybook uh needs to have better documentation. <laughs> That's good feedback. <laughs> yeah, and, and, uh, add, um the thing about this is so yeah, there are some projects that actually start really big, but most projects don't actually start out really big. So it's usually best if you can start like uh, documenting your UI, yeah, before mm -hmm. actually looking for it to get really large. So I think that's where storybook comes in that you know, helps out. Yeah, I know. I I think I spent a lot of time like uh, maybe mocking the 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 surfaces of the of the smart is it smart components like the dumb component is very easy to to uh create a storybook component when i had to create the smart uh components you know smart component that inject a lot of like surfaces uh that's where the pain came in because i had to uh i had to mock the the surfaces to return uh the, the mock data to render in the in the storybook component. You should come uh, to the storybook office hours and talk to Kai about that. Is it late at night for you though? I don't remember. What what time is it? Is it eleven p.m.? <laughs> I don't know. I'm seeing. See. I'm anything before midnight is okay. I mean, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to call myself Cinderella, but. <laughs> well, I know that there. No, I I really have a hard time doing coding stuff late at night. Uh, Storybook office hours is five p.m. my time, so it's earlier than we are now. Eleven p.m. Yeah, it's, yeah, cool. He's so nice. We could also get him to come on uh, APAC too. I'm sure he would. Oh yeah, He's super yeah, nice. Yeah, Kai. Yeah, Kai will come and talk about his. Uh, is it took took it? Schematic yeah, uh, toolkit. Yeah. So so many exciting things on the calendar. Yeah. So I feel like we need to start more channels just so we can have more stuff on the calendar. Just because we keep finding more cool people, it's like, oh, there's a blog post, but we're booked up till August. And what? Like, we need another channel. We need another channel just for Connie's like. Uh, uh, no. Rob. <laughs> Connie, can you tell Rob, I don't want to jump in and steal your thunder, but Rob had a good, very good question. Um, can you explain what Storyboard is or where you found it and where he can learn more about it? Story. We recorded that session, right? Yes, yeah, Storybook. Storybook is uh, here. Sorry. There's a Storybook channel and the Storybook team hosts the Storybook channel, but Connie, can you just tell them like what even you would use Storybook for? Because you mentioned it, but you didn't really say what why you like Storybook. Oh, okay. Because uh, like if you create like Storybook component, you can play with the uh, the behavior of your component without like starting the the uh, application to test it. 
because like because you can uh, play with the storybook component com component to test the input and output to see that it it, it is uh it is working before you you uh start the angular application to try it because if you i mean if this bug and you only find it in in the in in the application then it is maybe too late for for the developers yes it's like a little it's a little page that you can put in your app that just isolates one component and it's for you for your convenience as a developer so that you can work on one component but it handles all your inputs and outputs for you and it's really cool and i just dropped a little link in the chat that was uh, we had the storybook team come and do a super simple hello world for us that was like an intro meant for someone who's never seen it before um and i just put the link there for you and that's what connie saw and then she turned around and then implemented this what you saw and now you're all caught up yeah for me it's like sometimes i i i want to i just want to do it and i don't know if it, it had it, if it gives me like huge benefit like for storybook is it's a hit because i can play with the component and try try um to see the re the result and if it is um what i expect uh but for something else i use annex for like this uh small or small to medium size application is actually is not a right 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 choice but i love I annex um and i love annex but i only have one back back end and one one like one or two like libraries and if you want NX, something just like NX that, is but not smaller, yeah. just like NX, but smaller with less boilerplate is um, the CLI workspace, as Oya will tell you, that uh, <laughs> you can just make it, it. The thing is, there's only like one page. Oya, do you know, I can never find that page. Um, but somewhere in there, there's a page. I think we were talking about this, weren't we, in the uh, DOM course, that there's like a specific thing, or I don't know, it was one of the, one of the uh, office hours that we were doing. But the workspace, is basically just a projects folder, and then you put your apps inside the projects folder, and it share. It's the same thing where it shares. The reason why we needed the mono repo in the first place was because we wanted to share our node modules among more than one project, and it still does that, but it doesn't have all of the other um, extra stuff. Like you don't have extra TS configs and stuff like that. Anyway, it's uh, it's really really cool. So you might check that out if you like NX, but you don't, but you think it's too much for a small project. The, the CLI workspace is perfect. perfect. I love it for yeah. small demos. Yeah, I mean, the learning curve of index is a little, I mean, it's steeper, it's steeper than I originally uh, anticipated. You know how I feel. You don't need any more complexity than you have to have. Keep it simple. Even if you know how to do all the cool stuff and every crazy thing, you don't necessarily need all of that complexity. Yeah. Because Victor said himself that the NX is just a CLI schematic. It's just a very opinionated CLI schematic. So if you learn how to make CLI schematics and you learn the CLI workspace, then you can do your own mono repo and you don't need that third party. You know, you don't have to use that. You can just make your own and it's going to be very clean. And, and this is, you know, the, this is the beautiful thing is the more you learn this stuff and you can just write it yourself rather than getting a library or using something else, you can just make it from scratch. It's then your code is going to end up so simple and clean, elegant. Yeah. And, and we had DOM course week two yesterday and now I need to check back my Spanish app and see if I can use nice. like NG content or what, or wait. <laughs> Just wait yeah. one more week, Connie, because oh, okay. week three is it's my favorite week. It's it's the best. I'm gonna show you my favorite stuff. Then you can refactor everything. I mean, yeah, I, I, like the, the the template, the action ML template is a lot shorter, but I still think it can be like it can be like reduced to like smaller template if I use like the right to like the 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 ng content or the field child I, I need to look at my code once again and see if, if i can further improve it wait till week three yeah <laughs> yeah okay. la proxima semana yeah <laughs>
Thank you very much, Connie. I really much, appreciate Connie. this. Uh, and thank and you. thank you very much for the shout out, Connie, and you too, Oya. This is really like I. First of all, it warms my heart. It really like legit. It means a lot to me. It means more than money. When you guys tell me like that these courses were really helpful, like I really love it, and I would do it for free if my landlord didn't like. I would. I would. I love it. I really do. It means a lot, and also it helps me because. You know, I left consulting to start this business and I knew there wouldn't be any money for the first year, but like I want to, you know, start getting more students and it really helps me a lot. So I just want you to know how grateful I am. Thank you. We love you. We love you too. Uh, yeah, so I love much you. love you, here. You make me think twice before I write any code because I know Bonnie is, is nearby. <laughs> She's always washing, <laughs> but, but in a, in but a, in a supportive way. way, in like a benevolent, I'm on your side kind of way. Because I made all the mistakes, so I will never judge you. Because there is comparison, and you look at your template; it has like 150 lines. You think it's okay, and then someone's like has something in 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 50, like in 10 lines, and you know that. Oh God, I just wrote crap and I need to like refactor it right but you then can, you can like, make it beautiful but there's, there has to be comparison you need to see the good and then you know like how how bad yours is or or, or yeah. how to improve it like in 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 steps yeah I'm glad it's yeah. helpful I think yeah. Rob has a question or a comment hi <laughs> Agent, do uh, uh, you have questions for Connie? Consider and so. Your mic is on. Rob. Mind. Yeah, we can't hear you, Rob. We can't hear you. We can't see you, but we can feel your presence. Your mic is muted in case you're saying anything. Oh, you said the Quagle, the Quagle, Connie. We love I want Connie. Connie. I just know. Uh, Is that I uh, want Connie? I know La Quiero, La Quiero Taco Bell. I remember that. So maybe we love Connie. We love. What does that mean, Rob? T Te Quiero Taco Bell. I remember the Taco Bell commercial. There was a Chihuahua that like told us for years oh, that he loved uh, Taco Bell. I love you, Connie. Yeah. Oh, I thought it's Te, te, amo, te amo Mucho, right? Te amo. Uh, I love you. Te amo mucho. Te amo mucho. In, in a friendly way, is it? <laughs> oh no, no, that's that's romantic way. Sorry, should be yeah, yeah. This you you're correct. Te quiero, Connie. Yeah. So I, I'm still mm. running Spanish. I thought like quiero means I want, right? Te means you, and then mucho means a lot. Yeah, Samantha and I were trying to say that we were excited for pizza when we first moved here. Samantha apparently accidentally told several people that she loved them, but she was trying to say like, I like you. I'm, I'm, I think she was trying to say, it's nice to meet you. And instead she said, I love you by accident. And the guys were like, <laughs> quite charming. Yeah. Like, no, that's not what I meant. I was excited about the pizza, not you, but no, uh, yeah, it's just, it's hard learning a new language. I get it. Hey, I heard Oya got a new chair today. Yeah, you guys want to see, you want to check it out? Yes, we need to see. Oya is like styling and profiling. This is how is this? Uh, how is this from your from your old chair? Your old chair did not move. No, it did not. How no. are you feeling today, Oya? Are you feeling like a king? Are you feeling like royalty? Sitting in your captain's chair. You could sit there all day long, man, and just rake in the money. You went back on mute though. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's important to have a good chair. Ergonomics. Yeah, I do. Congratulations. Thanks guys. Um, so anyone has any other question, agents? Uh, okay. Okay. Um, I do. I, don't know. Um, I still don't know what that ax is. Can someone explain it to me? Uh, yeah, NX, so NX is a mono repo that was created by Narwhal. Uh, and it's basically like, if you have a bunch of projects, you know, you, you know, a, a GitHub repo, right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, what we started doing was when we started all making uh, projects, 
and then we started using GitHub and then we started. So what happens is at, once you have several projects, especially if your projects are kind of related, if you're at a company and you're making you know more than one application and they work together, then what we started to find was that we're having a because most of the same teams will use the same um, libraries. Like some teams love material and some teams love Kendo. And so there was a lot of repetition with our node modules. And so the point, the concept of a mono repo is that we have multiple different repos all in one big bucket. So we have different applications that are basically like subfolders of a big repo. Um, so NX is the branded version of it, but you can also do the same thing just with a CLI workspace. Um, so it's just, NX is just a mono repo. It's just one brand. It's like Coke versus Pepsi, right? It's one brand. But what she's talking about is a mono repo, and the mono repo is putting all of the projects together in one bucket so that we can all share the same node modules. Gotcha. There you go. Thanks for that. You're welcome. I guess sometimes some interfaces are shared by the back end and front end. You you want to have all these like projects in like a mono repo so the back end and the front end like use the same interface um to exchange data i think that's one one benefit of like mono repo yeah sorry i'm back was with tech support and still kind of solve the issue <laughs> you mean you have work to do besides just hanging out with us all day yeah <laughs> wow it's 1.35 p.m. here. <laughs> so. That's okay. Oh, where are you? I'm like 12. We are 12 hours York. apart. I'm in New, I'm York. New York. Brooklyn. Oh. Remember Brooklyn in the house? <laughs> Brooklyn. Can you so give us a Brooklyn, Brooklyn Queens, accent? But I like Brooklyn better. <laughs> How's the Yankee or Matt? Uh, actually, funny story, I do not like baseball. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm Dominican, I know. <laughs> Don't say anything. <laughs> Everybody asks me the same thing, like, oh, so what, what team do you go? I said, no, I don't like baseball. I don't, I don't follow it. <laughs> Tell us, Rob, the difference between uh, Tequiro and Te Amo, and can you pronounce so them for us? Tell like, Connie you know, that you, you love her. Friend. Yeah. Kiro, you would tell a friend and te amo, you would tell a, your significant other, you know, like, really, like, that's deep love. They are romantic you, like, love. Everybody. <laughs> te quiero. Te quiero. Yeah, say it again. Te quiero. Because yes. <laughs> I know right. how to say it from the Taco Bell commercials that I grew up with. <laughs> no, te quiero that's, Taco Bell. Yo quiero, yo quiero, yo quiero Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. Yes, because yes. I want. Well, what is the yo? Yo means I. 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 Okay. Yes. Yo quiero. <laughs> yo quiero. Right. Because and te quiero, quiero means quiero we. Want. Quiero is no, one. you. Quiero is you. also love, but yeah. not that deep love, but just love. <laughs> Friendly <laughs> love. Yeah, like All right. My like science abrazo. teacher used to say, when you love, you have to love with your liver because that's the biggest organ in your body. <laughs> 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 that's the one that does the most work. <laughs> that's awesome. Everything goes through the liver. Remember that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have you guys are so fun. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Well, who's got the next talk coming up? I think we have Fizzy tomorrow in the South Asia channel. Well, yeah, I'd just like to read some uh, Angular news just to get everyone up to date. Uh, yeah. Okay. So thanks for. Oh yeah, it's getting a phone call. Yeah, sorry about oh, yeah. that. Hear this. <laughs> yeah. Um, so oh yeah, oh yeah, in Spanish means hear this. <laughs> oh yes. Oh yeah, oh yeah, like listen to this. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, but anyway, uh, oh yeah, uh, can you like um, get me to participate in the uh, like Angular, you know? Novice group or whatever. I don't. I don't remember what the name of it is. Angular yeah. beginners. Okay. Beginners. Yeah. I want to like uh, you know, teach some stuff there. 
Yeah. He is so Brooklyn. I want to, you know, teach some stuff there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shut You're up. fun, Rob. <laughs> Put him in charge of the newbies, Oya. Lord <laughs> help him. <laughs> no problem. No problem. I have to strike that down. Okay. Uh, so thanks to everyone who attended. Um, thank you, Connie. That was a beautiful presentation. Never get, uh, I never get tired of seeing that presentation. Fabulous. I'm really fascinated by that your application. And yeah, thanks a lot for coming to share that with us. Okay, uh, so just a little brief um, news from the Angular team. Uh, so basically, the Angular team re released a YouTube video that gives us a brief um, recap on the Angular V12 release. And I think Mark was the one who was in that video. So if you want to just get a recap on the release for Angular V12, yeah, you can check that out. And yeah, Angular is also, we also have 100K YouTube subscribers in Angular. So yeah, that's a big one. We're trying to get Angular Nation to 100K too, so <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, um, so the Cypress team also released the migration guide to help you and your team transition from Protractor to Cypress. So if you're looking to transition from Protractor to Cypress, yeah, you can check that out. I think we also have a talk with, um, by Anna Boca that's coming up here on this channel. And uh, where she'll be giving us a brief intro into Cypress. So you really don't want to miss that. Uh, also be sure to check out the Angular Nation YouTube channel to check out our previous events that we you might have missed. And also don't forget to leave a like and please subscribe. Road to 100K. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for events we have coming up on Angular Nation. Uh, so tomorrow we have Fizzy doing runtime performance optimization on the Angular South Asia channel tomorrow. Um, on Thursday, we also have Shai Resnick, the Cypress team, and uh, more people giving us a talk about asking a text testing expert. So basically, you come with your questions about Angular testing, and we can fire away and get answers to them. Uh, on Friday, we have the Angular Americas Accord. So I think, I'm not really sure what that's about, but yeah. You don't want to miss that, Jeff. Welcome. You really, really do not want to miss that. And then, that one's uh, actually really fun. We don't have technical talks. We just have discussions. We yeah. do um, roundtable. Uh, we do Angular Nation news. Angular uh, same same thing as you, but we also have like um, just discussion questions. It's really good if you like participating. Yeah. So you don't want to miss that. And then on Friday we have our Friday social event. As usual. It's a fun session. Sadly, we don't record it. Maybe not sadly, anyways. But yeah, we don't record it. And yeah, it's a fun session. And you should try it. Come out and check it out with us. Yeah. Um, also, the Angular Architect training and the DOM manipulation training are actually going on Angular Nation. Do we know when the next one is starting, Ben? The next what? What is it? The next uh, set of Angular Architect training. Um, I think I'm going to take September, I'm going to take August off because my son's going to be here and I'm going to probably run it again in September. Okay. Okay. So yeah, we're having fun. And uh, just in case you want to join us, don't forget to get that. So, uh, you could, if you want to join, cause we're in the middle of it now. And if you want to join late, I'll put you in the next one for free. If you just reach out to me and remind me if you want to join it, cause then you can like participate from the beginning. You can just yeah. join in because everything's recorded. So you can see everything. But the most fun is the office hours. That's what you don't want to miss. So if you want to join and you don't want to wait until September, you can watch the recordings now, but you can also join us if you want. Just let me know. Yeah, yeah. So that's a fun one, too. Thanks to everyone who attended. And uh, I'll hand over to Val now to close us. Valentine. Hi. Thank you very much, Oye, for your BBC, you know, <laughs> Uh, thank you, Connie, for the great presentation. Really appreciate it, and thanks for you know taking your time despite the time in your area. Really appreciate that. Um, thank you, every other person, for joining us. Simon, Agent, and Steven, and of course, Bernie. <laughs> thank you, guys. Um, I think uh, we've gone a bit past the actual time, and uh, but still fine since you guys are still around. So. We've come to the end of today's session officially, so I'm going to stop re recording. Bye. 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 Thanks, Connie. Bye. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.